Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Tron XY Crux 1, a direct drive 3D printer in an insanely small form factor. But at only 179 US dollars, can this printer be any good? Let's find out. Before we begin, the Crux 1 was sent to me for review by Tron XY. They aren't paying me for this review, and they won't be seeing this video before it goes live. Everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. With that out of the way, let's get into the review. The Tron XY Crux 1 is a filament-based 3D printer, with a max print volume of 180mm on all three axes. It is a cantilever design, where the x-axis is supported on only one side by the z-axis. The x and y axis ride on metal OSG rails, which provide a smooth motion and should hold up better over time than the usual rubber V-slot wheels found on many other printers. The hot end is a standard 0.4mm nozzle with a max print temperature of 275 degrees Celsius. It has a blower style print cooling fan that does a great job at quickly cooling the prints. Don't be confused by the tubing, the Crux 1 has a direct drive extruder, which uses 1.75mm filaments. The direct drive has some advantages over Bowden style extruders, mainly the need for less retraction and ability to print with flexible filaments. The Crux 1 has a filament runout sensor mounted on the X axis, which will pause the prints and beep at you if it detects a break in the filaments. The X axis attaches to the Z axis using three rubber V-slot wheels. Towards the top of the Z-axis is a metal handle, which makes this printer surprisingly portable. Moving down towards the base, the bed moves on the Y-axis using the same metal OSG rails mentioned earlier. There are two options for the bed, a lattice glass plate that clips onto the bed, or the option that I have here, a magnetic, flexible, spring steel PEI plate. I haven't worked with a glass bed, but the flexible PEI plate makes it easy to remove prints. However, it has a pretty rough surface, so your bottom layers won't be smooth. The base of the printer holds the 2.8 inch full color touchscreen. The controls are easy to navigate, although I don't like how you have to navigate to a status page to see the current temperatures. The temperature controls are also kind of strange, as they increment in steps of 4 degrees, so you can't set a temperature of 205 degrees Celsius from the control panel. You can only set 204 or 208. That's only a UI restriction though, your slicer can set it to any temperature. The viewing angle is pretty narrow, with the screen being flat on the base means that you need to be standing slightly over to the printer in order to see it clearly. You can select files to print from the micro SD card slot, or the USB Type-A port in the front, or connect to your computer or Raspberry Pi to the USB Type-B slot to send G-code directly. Opening the base of the printer reveals the built-in power supply and main board. Unlike other small cantilever printers, the Crux One has the power supply built-in, no need for an external power brick. The control board uses TMC2225 stepper drivers on a 32-bit main board. These motor drivers are near silent, with the only noise in operation being from the cooling fans, and it is very comfortable to be in the same room while printing. It uses Marlin 2.16 as the firmware. Finally, around the rear of the printer is the filament spool holder. The spring-loaded screw acts as a Z-axis end stop, making it easy to adjust the nozzle height with just a twist of that screw. Assembly was extremely easy, as most parts were already pre-assembled. Screw in the X and Z axis assembly to the base, screw in the filament holder, and assembly complete. Really, it took about 10 minutes total to get up and running. I used Kira as a slicer, but as of Kira 5.1, there is no built-in profile for the Crux One. I used the Tron XY D1 as a starting point and modified the machine size to match the 180mm print volume and tweaked the ending G-code. More on that in a bit. So now that we know about the machine, let's talk about the prints. You can find links to all of the models and settings on my 3D print log page linked in the description. The included sample cat model set high expectations. Besides some stringing in the ears, the model printed very well. The fur detail is clean and the flat vertical sections are smooth. Great start. Then I sliced up my own 3D Benchy. My first print failed due to a mistake in my ending G-code. I accidentally copied over an extra extrude command, so it pushed a glob of plastic. Easy enough fix, and the second Benchy printed well. There's still some stringing presence and some inconsistencies around the doorways, but ultimately still a passable Benchy. Next up is something much larger. This dice tower has thin, small pillars that would be a challenge for any printer. However, what I saw in the main structure was disappointing. Focusing on the archway, you can see inconsistent extrusion. This turns out to be from the cantilever x-axis vibrating. I do my initial assembly and prints on a plastic workbench, 
and that workbench isn't very rigid. The combination of the Crux 1's cantilevered axis, the print speed, and the non-rigid table caused a significant amount of vibration, which affected the print quality dramatically. I'll talk about the solution in just a second, but to finish up the dice tower, I was happy that all of the tall pillars printed successfully. While the tower isn't a perfect print, it is certainly a challenging one. Once I noticed the vibration issue, I moved the printer to a more rigid table for the rest of my tests, and that made a world of difference. This skull mask shows much less Z-wobble than the dice tower, due to being on a more solid surface. There are a few areas, like the area between the eyes that shows some extrusion inconsistencies, but the rest of the prints is very nice. The overhang on the cheeks are particularly impressive, and shows off the power of the print cooling fan. And let's look at one more example, this Captain America bust. It turned out good, but not perfect. The overhangs are great, and the smooth sloping sections on the sides and backs are consistent. However, there are small dots of missing plastic scattered throughout the print. I have a feeling this might be from retraction settings, so some more profile tweaks might be needed to really dial in the printer. The Crux 1 nailed spiral vase mode prints. Unlike some other printers I've tested, the power loss detection feature did not affect the ability to print spiral vases, and they turned out perfect. I scaled one vase up to the max 180mm tall, but I found that the printer reaches its limit at about 178mm. I would think that it's possible to tighten the bed screws and Z-axis end stop screw just enough to get a full 180mm, but when I see 180mm advertised, I'd expect the printer to be able to print 180mm as shipped. Let's move over to the other features of the Crux 1. Both the filament sensor and power loss detection work as expected. When it detects the filament is missing, it moves the hot end to 0, zero and gives an audible alarm to alert you to change the filament. Then it resumes printing right where it left off. The power loss detection kicks in when the printer loses power mid-print either by pulling the plug or flipping the switch. When it turns back on, it asks if you want to resume. It then heats up and starts printing at the last layer that it was on. I cut the filament and pulled the plug three times each for this calibration cube. And while you can definitely tell where it paused, it is better than losing an entire print to a blackout. During my testing, I did run into one issue that I haven't seen before and that is my heated bed would not turn off after a print had finished. Marlin has two bed temperature commands, M140, which sets the bed to a temperature but immediately continues, and M190, which sets the bed to a temperature and waits for it to settle before continuing. I double checked the NG code, and they were all using an M140 S0 command, which should have set the temperature to zero, but not wait for it to reach it. Yet, it would remain heated after the prints have finished. I made a short test file to test the bed, where it heats the bed up, makes two moves, and then turns everything off. When M140 is used, the file would finish, but the bed would remain heated. But switching to an M190 would turn off the bed. I've never seen that before, and the equivalent M104 command for the hot end does not experience the same issue. So if you pick up a Crux 1, be sure to modify the NG code to use an M190 command to turn off the bed. In conclusion, I have mixed feelings about the Crux 1. The Crux 1 is priced at 179 US dollars, or $189 with the flexible PEI spring steel bed. At that price, you get a portable 3D printer that was easy to assemble and gets straight to printing. The cantilever design means that you need to be more careful about Z wobble due to the x-axis flexing, but that can be mitigated somewhat by placing it on a solid surface. The direct drive extruder allows for a wide variety of printing materials, including flexible materials like TPU. The touchscreen is nice to use, although the viewing angle is small from the front, and it has convenience features like a filament sensor and power loss detection that similarly priced printers often leave out. However, the fact that the normal G-code to turn off the heated bed doesn't work leaves a bad taste in my mouth. At best, it is a waste of electricity, and at worst, it could be a safety issue. I haven't seen this mentioned in other reviews though, so I don't know if it's just my printer's version of the firmware that has this issue. Please let me know in the comments if you've experienced a similar issue. I think that the Tron XY Crux 1 would be suited for an entry-level printer for someone looking to dip their toes into the 3D printing hobby, or for folks that a small footprint and the ability to easily move the printer when it's not in use is an important feature. If you are interested in learning more, you can find links to the printer and all of my sample prints in the description. So, thank you all for watching my review of the Tron XY Crux 1. Let me know what you think about the printer in the comments down below. And if you are interested in cantilever printers, 
why not check out my review of the Ender 2 Pro. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.